I'm really excited that on today's episode of Comic Class, we're going to be talking about DCs, the brand new zombie miniseries from DC Comics, because it gives me an opportunity to bring back out the zombie goat plush. The greatest plush that has ever existed. I legit forgot how long this goes on for. I apologize. I think it's finally done. Hey everyone, it's me, Aaron, and welcome to another episode of Comic Class, the show every single week on this channel where we just geek out all the comic books. And as I said today, we are talking about issue number one of the brand new miniseries, Deceased. A series that I'm pretty sure was sold entirely on the name alone. Now that I'm complaining, the name Deceased is too good to not do something with it. DC Comics has been around for what, 80 years at this point, and they never came up with the idea Deceased? Like, it just feels like that was just sitting there. Just waiting for someone to do something with that. Maybe it was pitched like 20 times over the years, and they kept looking at it going, Nah, that name is just too goofy. And we right now are finally at that peak point in comic book history where nothing is too goofy anymore. And I'm very excited about that. So Deceased is a brand new alternate reality storyline coming from DC Comics, in which it is set in a world where Darkseid ends up getting his hands on the anti-life equation. Now, for anybody who doesn't know that much about Darkseid, he's been searching all this time for something called the Anti-Life Equation, which would basically remove all free will from everyone that it infects. So, it would basically be his way of taking over the entire universe. He would be in charge of everyone out there because no one would have any free will anymore, and he's found half the equation, and he believes the other half is within Cyborg. However, he needs something to kind of balance the equation. He needs something to be able to successfully merge these two halves. So he summons the Black Rider. For anybody who doesn't know the new gods, the Black Rider is basically death. It's basically Grim Reaper in the DC Universe. He brings the Black Rider out, takes a chunk of the Black Rider out, uses that to basically hotwire the anti-life equation together. So he's like, alright, I got it. Perfect. It's all set. Turns out you can't really take this infectious mind virus and merge it with death and everything's gonna be okay. In fact, you probably shouldn't be doing anything with an infectious mind virus to begin with. Nothing will ever be okay with that. So he decides to merge it with a little bit of the Grim Reaper and it gets inside his head and it drives him insane. He immediately starts ripping his own face off, putting these big scratches on his face and then he just starts tearing into everything and within the first couple pages of this book, he does something to Apocalypse. And I will not spoil it, but you know how they say when you get into prison, you need to find the biggest guy there and beat him up to show everybody that you're the boss? That's kind of what happens in this book. They want to come in here and let you know how big the stakes are in this book. They want to let you know that nothing is safe we're just going to do everything that we possibly can in this book. They kind of do that with a very large thing in this book. And I looked at that and went, oh, so nothing is off the table. So this book has some pretty great pacing. Because not only does it start with that, but then Cyborg is sent back to Earth and people start taking photos of Cyborg because, you know, it's 2019 and if you see a superhero walking around, you take photos of them. And he's trying to tell them to stop, but it's too late. They're taking photos, they've started spraying it around, it's going around Twitter, it's going around Facebook, it's going around YouTube, it's going around Instagram. And this now takes that weird death version of the anti-life equation, and it spreads it electronically through social media. So, it's a brand new style of zombie virus, because anybody who looks at it on social media, they are instantly infected. And the thing that makes these versions of zombies unique is that the first thing that happens to them after they get infected is that they really want to get out of their head, so they start scratching and clawing at their own head, so they all have just these big scratches along their faces. And I appreciate that. I like the idea that they didn't want this to just be zombies. There needs to be something different about these zombies, something that makes them visually distinct from other versions of zombies. I really appreciate that, and I think that, you know, this is a logical thing to do. It is a mind virus, they want to get it out of their mind. You know, makes sense. I can fully understand this decision to design these style of zombies after that. So, 
after this, within like a couple seconds, 600 million people across the entire planet are already infected. And as I said, this book has got really good pacing to it. Because immediately, we're just off to the races. Immediately, everyone is that infected with this thing. And it's so interesting that this is the story of kind of a zombie virus that is spread through social media because this is being written by Tom Taylor. However, also over at DC Comics is James Tinney IV. James Tinney IV is kind of known as being a big horror guy. And a couple years back, he actually did one of my all-time favorite horror series, Mimetic. I've talked about many times here on this series. If you have been a long time fan, you know how much I love Mimetic. That was one of those books that after I read it, I actually had to kind of like put it down and just go, it's just a book. It's a, that's not real. That's not real. It's one of those books that like after I read, I thought, I'm going to die in 24 hours, aren't I? Like, this is some kind of a curse, isn't it? Right? You just, you're just trying to burn the entire world down with your weird mystical comic books? Is that what you're doing, James Tingy in the fourth? Huh? I know how this functions. Uh, yeah, it was a freaky, freaky book. It's basically the same concept. It's basically this zombie virus that is spread through a meme. And considering how much James Tinian has his fingers in many different aspects of DC Comics right now, I'm honestly wondering if Tom Taylor might have been influenced by this at all. Not that I'm coming in here and saying he just ripped off James Tinian. No, 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 man. These ideas are out there. If you can take an idea and be inspired by it to create your own thing, that's perfectly fine. That's great. I'm just wondering if he was inspired by this or if it's just a really weird coincidence that two people working at DC Comics wrote zombie books with very similar concepts that are not like any other zombie book out there right now. Now, I'm not going to reveal too much more about this book because it is very good. And when a book is good, I want you guys to go out there and read it. But I will say, when I was talking about this book being announced a couple months back, I was talking about how yeah, I don't really like when you use the possible deaths of characters to tease your upcoming books. I find that to be kind of insulting to the readers, and that is kind of how this book was being pitched. But when I found out it was an alternate reality story, I was like, oh, well then do that all you want. That's actually great, because that's the one time when you can really just go in there and go nuts with these characters, and you don't have to worry about any of the consequences on this. That's when you can kind of just go, hey, let's have some morbid fun. I know that those are two words that really should not go together, but hey man, when it comes to zombie stuff, that is kind of the feeling you're supposed to have. So I went into this talking about, oh man, I can't wait to see zombie this character, and zombie that character, and zombie this character, I can't wait for that. And then I forgot it was Tom Taylor who was writing this, and Tom Taylor, he kind of became known over at Marvel with X-Men Red and with All New Wolverine for being a guy who wrote really heartfelt stories about these characters that made you care about them. And I completely forgot, after years of him being over at Marvel on those books, that before that, he was at DC on the Injustice book. I was like, oh yeah, right, I forgot. He can also just rip your heart out by making you see these characters, even if they're in an alternate reality, just being tormented and murdered and having horrible things happen to them. I forgot Tom Taylor has a very dark side to him. And he really gets to show that off again in this book. It feels almost like when he was over at Marvel, he got to live out all of the big, light, fluffy, heartfelt stuff that he wanted to tell. But then that caused an imbalance in him, and now all the dark stuff was just rising back up. And it's like, well, gotta get all this stuff out there now. And that's what this book is. Because, as I said, when I went into this book, I was like, yeah, you can do whatever you want with these characters because it's an alternate reality. I'm not going to care. But he just has an amazing way of pacing how all this stuff is laid out there. And the artists also do a wonderful job of just setting up every single frame so that it just builds so much tension in there. Because as I said, this virus is being spread through social media. And there was a moment in there in which Clark Kent, Superman, he sees just the world on fire. He just sees people everywhere just screaming and ripping at their own faces. And he doesn't know what to do about this. And his first thought is his wife and his son. And it cuts to Lois looking around the house while his son and Damien are playing video games. And she's like, have you seen my phone? Uh, I'm sorry, Mom, I don't know where it is. Damien, do you know where the phone is? Why would I know where the phone is? It's like a great little exchange between these two. It builds up, oh yeah, they're friends. We know how this plays out. And she's looking for the phone. And then John finds it. And there's that shot of him reaching out to grab it. 
And it was in that moment that I went, I don't think I want to read this book anymore. I think I kind of want to just close the tab down. Just shut, just shut down the whole computer. Don't want to keep reading this. Uh, Comixology, you can keep my money on this book. It's very good. Everybody who worked on it deserves that cash. I don't want to keep reading it. Because even though I know this is an alternate reality, they set up in that one panel, oh my god. Uh, yeah. I may or may not be about to see Jonathan Kent, the sweetest little cinnamon roll in the entire DC universe, about to rip his mom's face off. I don't want to watch that, even if it is an alternate reality. I'm good. And that's the magic of Tom Taylor's writing. He can really make you care about a character, even when it's in an alternate reality. And he knows exactly how to make you care about a character, so that he can then use that care to destroy you later on by making terrible, horrible things happen to them. And part of the way that Tom Taylor is able to accomplish this is that he is a guy who, even when he only writes someone for like a panel or two, he is someone who is able to come in here and totally capture in those panels exactly what you like about that character. Like, when this book begins, and he's got the whole Justice League there, he's got Green Arrow for maybe like three lines of dialogue, but every single line of dialogue that Green Arrow has up there, I heard Alan Tudyk's voice coming out of that Green Arrow. Which is appropriate since Alan Tudyk played Green Arrow in the Injustice games, and Tom Taylor wrote the Injustice comics. So, basically, Tom Taylor is able to capture the best voice I've ever heard for Green Arrow in three lines of Green Arrow dialogue. Yeah, that is what this guy's magic superpower is when it comes to writing DC characters. He just gets these characters. He can just instantly come in here and just fully capture them in every single voice. Like, there was a moment in which Cyborg is on Apocalypse, and yeah, I heard the Cyborg from the old Teen Titans cartoon in there, which is my favorite version of Cyborg. It is really weird how Tom Taylor, in so few lines of dialogue, is able to capture my favorite voices for each of these characters. And he's going to use that to make me really sad. Now, if I have one complaint about this first issue, I was kind of hoping for a little bit of a bigger bang towards the end. Starts out with something pretty big, then the image of the entire world being infected, that's pretty big. But you know, we came into this book because it was like, alright, we're gonna see all of these super people end up getting infected. You don't really see much of that in this first issue. You get one thing at the very end of super people being infected. And I was like, okay, well that is a good final image to go out on. That definitely does set up the tone of this book. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more though, like maybe show us what's happening with that character, but then also maybe what's happening with that character, maybe what's happening with that character. Kind of not to set up one thing at the end, but to set up multiple things at the end, because this is supposed to be a story featuring the entire DC Universe, but I understand you don't have infinite pages to tell your story, and if they only had time to tell one thing that was happening to a character at the end, yeah, they chose the right one there at the end. Plus, as I said, this book does have really good pacing. This is going to be six issues long. I don't know what the pacing is going to be like for the rest of this, so maybe starting out with that smaller moment, just focusing on one character there at the end, that could actually pay off way larger as we go along. You know, kind of like planting that one seed with that one character, and then that kind of grows and spreads into this character and this character. Uh, I will also say... I'm still a little bit curious about the rules of these zombies. Like, we know it's spread through social media. We know you see it, gets inside your head, start trying to tear off your own head. Then you go around and you're like a big rage monster. But is that the only way that you get infected? Like, do other zombie rules apply to this? Like, if you end up getting bitten or you end up getting scratched, do you end up getting infected that way? I'm a little bit confused about that right now. But that is definitely a thing that will be explained in later books. I would have liked it if we got a little bit more explanation now, but it's not a necessary thing. In fact, the fact that I don't know this could help with some cliffhangers that might come up in the future of this series. So I'm not really complaining about that much, just kind of like a little bit of like, eh, I would have liked that, I would have liked that, but it's not necessary, not necessary at all. Yeah, I think that this is a very solid issue. Uh, if you are into zombies, if you are into Tom Taylor, if you are into Batman, if you are into any of the other words or verbs or nouns that I have said throughout the course of this video. If you're into goats, then go ahead, pick up this book. I really did dig it. I just kind of wish that we'd gotten a little bit more there at the end. Uh, in fact, it's one of those books that I won't lie to you. 
when I got to the end, I was like, wait, that's it? We're done with the issue already? We've already gone through all the pages of this book? Oh, okay. Like, it's a book that soars by. It's not like there isn't stuff here, but man, it really just moves. Uh, which makes me kind of sad that I have to wait an entire other month to get the next issue of this. But yeah, uh, I did really enjoy it, and I do recommend it to everyone out there. And if you are looking for something good to read this Halloween, I love the fact that they set this thing up. They planned this thing out so well in advance that yeah, this comes out May, June, July, August, September, October. They specifically planned this thing so that it would be done in time for Halloween. That is smart. I love that they did that. Uh, now, I have given you my recommendation on this. I said that I love it. There is a question that I have, though, that I want to pose here. And this doesn't really necessarily have to do with this book. It has to do with something that DC is doing in general. DC, they've been launching a lot of new lines to their books. They've been launching a whole bunch of new brands for their uh, series. And I have applauded that a lot. This is something that I said in a video, like, what, maybe two years ago that comic book companies do need to start doing. They need to stop like putting all their titles under one banner, and they need to kind of do what DC has done with Vertigo, where they do divide their stuff up a little bit more. I've said especially like Marvel needs to be doing this stuff, and we've started to see Marvel doing that as well. All their young reader books now kind of come out under IDW's young reader title because they have realized that IDW sells better for younger readers. That makes total sense for me. Uh, and DC has really embraced this idea. Because they've got like five or six brand new lines for their series. And they launched one called Black Label. In which it was supposed to be the darker, more mature, more mm, less family friendly titles. Let's go ahead and put it that way. And they made a big deal about all these books they were going to be putting out. And they put out a Batman book. And they showed us Batman's penis. And everybody got upset. And it ruined the lives of people who work at comic book stores all across the country for about an entire month. And then we just didn't really hear anything about Black Label anymore. And coming later this month, we do have another Black Label book finally coming out. But yeah, it's been about like six months since they put one of these out. And I feel like if you're launching an entire line of books, you need to put out more than just one series every six months under it. You need to kind of get a bunch of things out there to let people know, oh, this is what this is going to be like. And I was thinking about how Black Label is supposed to be the darker, more mature, uh, more, I don't want to say horror feel, uh, sorry, bleh. excuse me, take two, more horror filled series out there, uh, but definitely books that have a darker tone to them. And then I was thinking, this is a DC book about a zombie virus where heroes are going to be murdering other heroes while they try to rip their own faces off. Why isn't this a Black Label book? Why is this still under the regular DC banner? Like, this is a big thing. A lot of people are talking about this. This is something that is going to be gaining lots of people's attention. Would it have gotten the Black Label line a lot of attention as well? If you had made this Black Label? And considering the subject matter, it doesn't even feel like you would need to have changed anything about this? All the Black Label books are happening in alternate realities as well. This is an alternate reality book. Except that, as I said, the Black Label alternate reality books, you don't have to worry about, like, how they fit into the alternate reality. When it comes to DC Comics, they have an alternate reality map all laid out. Where it's this or this here, this or this here, this or this here. So if you create a new alternate reality, you kind of have to look at that and be like, oh, wait, shoot, so does that fit in there somewhere? No, 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 don't, don't worry about that, don't worry about that. I feel like if you want people to not worry about, like, how a DC alternate reality book fits into their whole alternate reality scheme, it would have been easier for people to not worry about that if you just picked it in the picked it up and put it in the black label an entire line of books where the entire purpose of it is yeah don't worry about that uh yeah it kind of feels weird to me that this is not a black label book it kind of feels weird that this would have been an awesome opportunity to help promote the black label line and they're not doing that yeah it's just kind of odd to me uh that could just be me let me know what you guys think down below and let me know what you thought about this book down below uh, as I said, huge recommendation from this. Uh, if you guys want more from us, then make sure that you click that subscribe button. Make sure that you smash that bell, because that's the thing I have to say now. Uh, give us a thumb up, share this video around the web. You know everything to do. Uh, so I'm just going to sit here, think about the tragic things that I've seen, while this plush goat takes us out.
That last part still never quite fits in there. But thanks, everyone. Bye.